color theory has the long-standing reputation of being one of the most difficult art fundamentals to truly master, and rightfully so. Color and light and the relationship between the two has fascinated artists for centuries. It was the driving focus behind the Impressionist movement, for example, and tonalism beyond that. Entire books have been written about the subject, and your exploration of color and light as an artist will never stop. Your color choices can inform the perception of your work and the execution of whatever emotion you really want to convey. But what if I told you that one of the modern experts on color theory, someone who has worked on shows like The Mandalorian, Westworld, movies like Ratatouille, has been posting videos on YouTube explaining color theory, giving an enormous wealth of knowledge right here on YouTube for months, and you likely didn't know about it. I'm of course talking about Jeremy Vickery, for those of you that do know, an artist that has worked in film and animation for over 25 years, and I recently had the enormous privilege to sit down with him for 45 minutes and chat about color theory, his journey to where he is, what you want to share in a portfolio, how to get into the animation industry, etc. And the rest of this video is going to be that conversation. So I'll go ahead and let Jeremy take it from here. So um, I have actually been in the film and animation industry for over 25 years. I have worked in feature animation, most notably at Pixar for on many films. I worked um, I took a year off and then accidentally kind of got into the games world and worked in games for five years. Um, and now I've come back to film, but in a weird way where it's merging the worlds of film and game and doing virtual production with live action. So it's kind of like a convergence of, of worlds. Um, I do traditional art, grew up doing traditional art, and got into digital art, and that's made it my career. Um, I also only recently started a YouTube channel just to kind of share back with the community ideas of how to understand color yeah. and light. My, my particular expertise has been as a lighting artist, you know, and as a colorist and illustrator and art director, kind of a mix of all of those things really focused around color and light. So there's the two minute, my background. That sounds incredible. Yeah. So how did you go from 2D art to like the really awesome complex stuff that you're doing now? So when I grew up, I'm old, so when I grew up there was no internet, there were no cell phones, you know, and it was only traditional painting. And my grandfather yeah. was actually a technical artist. Oh, hello. There's your Sorry, cat. that's my cat. <laughs> What's your cat's name? Uh, his name cat's is Spooky. Love. Spooky, that's awesome. They love the camera. Could you maybe not have your tail in front of the camera, please, sweetheart? Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I grew up doing traditional art, and when I think back to, you know, who were my mentors, you know, and growing up, it was my grandfather, you know, and he taught me to, to actually see, like, don't draw what you think you see, draw what you actually see, like, really study yeah. the lines and the shape and the forms, and so that was my background, you know, and, and really studying things, and I did a lot of pencil drawing, um, and then I knew when I, you know, got to college age, is like, I want to do something with the arts. I can't imagine doing anything else. I never wanted to be a policeman right. or a, you know, a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant or a business person of any kind. It was just like art. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's the only choice that I have. And, you know, I applied myself and um, I got a degree in digital media, which was in 1997 that I graduated. So it was... Um, a long time ago, and the, the, the degree was really general, kind of covered everything from traditional art to video editing to audio editing mm -hmm. to computer animation to, at the time, CD-ROM authoring and all kinds of virtual reality, and, yeah. and just like everything all in one. Um, but I knew I wanted to work in animation in particular. Um, Toy Story came out when I was in college, and I remember sitting in the theater going, wow, that would be really cool to go work there. Yeah. And so... I naively thought when I graduated, you know, I was top of my class, I was the valedictorian, it's going to be great, and nothing. I, I sent out demo mm. reels to 50 companies, and there was just nothing. I didn't realize that, you know, I needed to grow a lot in the basics, the traditional art, and the understanding of, you know, how shape and form and color and perspective and just all of those things work together to make beautiful art, as well as all the technical things at the time. You know, animation was really, really, really complicated and technical. Um, so I yeah. went and I did find a job and, you know, got into the industry. And that's when I really started to learn. So one of the things that people always ask me is, like, does college prepare you? 
for what you need in the industry. It's like, I think that college just teaches you how to learn. That's it. Different from high school. I agree. High school is like, yeah. high school is like, you have to do it. But college is like, mm -hmm. this is your future. You know, what do you care about? How, what are you going to learn? And then when you get into the industry, that's when you really start to learn. I don't think the school can always teach everything you need. It'll just teach you to make connections and to be a decent human being and to learn to learn. So that's how yeah. I got in. That's such a great answer to so many questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of like art education, you talked about how like you don't think that art school really prepares you for like working um but like or college in general but like it does prepare you to like sort of learn on your own um what kind of value do you think that art schools have right now when the industry is just like changing so much like it's evolving so rapidly there are so many ways to make it as a creative and like you have ai art like dolly 2 and midrain that are now arriving on the scene that are like sure to shake things up even more and like what kind of um, cutting edge, like improvements, you think that art schools should be making to kind of stay relevant? Okay, you got multiple questions in there. Uh, I'm just going to yeah. speak really quickly to the to the Dolly AI, you know, um, you know this type of world. Several people have asked me, even on my my new channel, you know, like, isn't you know, is this worthwhile learning art because AI is going to take over? And I go, it is absolutely worthwhile because when you think about what we are as human beings, we tell stories. Yeah. That's what makes us human. You know, and so I, I once read a book and I don't even remember what the book was. I just remember the intro. In the intro, the guy said, you know, someday, uh, I, you know, like when I was a kid, I wanted to be a dentist because dentists make a lot of money. And his mother said, someday they're going to fix dentistry with robotics and that you won't need dentists anymore. But stories will last forever. And we are made to tell our stories to future generations. And so as much as we come up with stuff that will automatically do artwork for us, it's not our stories. We will feel the urge to tell our own stories and to create our own things. So I'm not afraid of AI. I think it can give us a lot of tools, but it's definitely not going to replace the stories that are in our soul that we have to tell with one another that we want to do with yeah. our own artwork. So um, I think it's really important to focus in on that and to say this is not about the actual creation, the actual pen strokes. This is about the human soul. So you, you take a lot of the technical things, a lot of the technical tools that were really difficult, and we were making them easier and easier so that you can get to the thing that's most important. The traditional art itself, the actual story of the art, you know, the, the images, the sequences that you make are what's really important. So let's lean into that. Um, so, do I think school is, you know, university, college, art school is worth it? Well, it really depends on the school, um, and it also depends on your personality. So, I think that there's some people that need structure outside of themselves, that are so used to someone telling them what to do. And if you're that type of person, can't be self-motivated, then yes, I think art school would be really good for you to have that structure of how to learn. At the same time, schools have gone up in price exponentially. So what's oh, yeah. sad is that art school can be more expensive than a Harvard medical degree. You know, it's nuts to think that you could come out of art school making, there's no way you're going to make a doctor's salary in art, but you're going to have the debt, you know, $250,000, $300,000 worth of debt just doesn't make sense for somebody coming into the industry who's going to start really low wage and very slowly work their way up. There's also the possibility of there's so many tools and there's so many channels and free things and ways to learn online that are so much cheaper than a traditional university. I would question a lot of people to, you know, ask a lot of people to really question it, to go, can you have the motivation? Can you get in on a workshop? Can you learn things on your own? Because um, having worked in the industry for 25 years, I can say that your college degree means zero compared to mm -hmm. your portfolio. Your portfolio is everything. That's um, interesting. When I worked, do at you Pixar, think that companies would do you think that companies would hire someone who didn't have a degree if they had a very strong portfolio? If they like blew everything absolutely. out of the park with their work, mm. guaranteed all the time happens all the time. There's a lot of people that I work with that have no art degree at all. You know, that has no degree at all. We don't care about the degree. In fact, um, when I worked at Pixar, this was like six years ago. Now um, it's been a while since I left. We used to get three thousand demo reels a day. So it was three people's wow. jobs to just watch demo reels over and over and over. They wouldn't even look at the resumes 
unless the demo reel. The first 10 to 15 seconds of the demo reel was great. Then they would watch the rest of it. If it was still great, then they would look at the resume and go, all right, where did they go? Where is their experience? And, okay, they went to school. That's, that means something. But it's not the first thing, for sure. You know, mm -hmm. in the arts, we don't care if you're a high school student who's just learned on your own. You got the job. Either way. So that's something definitely to be considered. You know, do you want to get into the world with $200,000 worth of debt? If you have the money to do it, it's great. The community is great. That's the other thing, is that what yeah. you gain from art school is people and those relationships mm -hmm. and connections yeah, that networking. are really good. Yep. So it's a mix, mix match. Depends on your personality, your background, your av availability of funds, the time that you have. But I would definitely say with debt, oof, yeah, it's, it's a hard choice. Yeah. So for someone that really wanted to get into animation or like work at Pixar like you have and kind of like follow your career path but didn't have the funds or the means to really pursue higher education, what kind of like path should they pursue as a self-taught artist? Like what kind of things should they really focus on or like resources that you might know of that could really help them? So this is one of those things that's hard um, because our industry is evolving so quickly and there's so many things yeah. to learn. And there's so many different little paths that you make one change and it, you know, it can lead to completely different careers. Like if you want to be an illustrator concept artist is a very different path than if you want to be an animator. Um, you know, mm. I think a lot of people coming out of school just go, I just want to work in animation at all. And there's a lot of jobs in animation. So um, I can say that, you know, for the parents that come in that are unknowing to say starving artists, that's not a thing. There's a lot of money yeah. in animation and in games, especially games. Games is booming. The industry is huge. There's tons of jobs. It's hard to find good artists. So if you're good at what you do, you absolutely will get jobs. Um, you just have to get to the point where you're good enough to compete you know, and push forward. So you're going to have to learn those skills. Um, so there's a lot of different kind of paths. If you are really into acting and you want to work in animation, you know, be an animator because that's their job. They don't worry about color or light or, you know, composition or any of that. They they study character and form and anatomy and acting and flow and storytelling in the classics, you know, versus if you want to be a, an environment concept artist, you're going to have to learn to really draw and understand shape and form and light and color and there's so many different things. So, I feel like there's a lot of resources online for each of these different disciplines. There's um, yeah. all kinds of different training that's out there. And I would pursue, like, finding somebody who does what you want to do, like experimenting, playing, try, try different things, you know, try out different animation software, see if you like the technical side of it, see if you like the artistic side of it, see if computers drive you nuts and you want to just do traditional yeah. kind of stuff. You know, there's, there's so many mixes. And once you find that, find people who are doing that what inspires you and try contacting them. I have people contact me all the time, like yourself, who just say, Hey, I saw yeah. your stuff. You know, you want to chat? And like a lot of people will say yes, you know, and mm -hmm. as long as you do it with kindness and with professional, you know, you'd be okay to let them say, Hey, if you have the time, just be really gracious. A lot of people will feel mm -hmm. flattered. You know, a lot of us sit in dark little rooms and be like, I just sit all day just doing yeah. art. I would love to talk to somebody. This is great. You know, seeing that, you mm -hmm. know, young artists passion, you know, reignites us to go, yeah, you know, even though my job is really tough, I have the best job in the world. I wouldn't do anything else. I, I love what I do. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of it. So, you know, having new people come in and ask you, like, tell me how to get there. Where, where are the resources? Um, yeah, yeah. Some yeah no, I, I totally feel you with regards to like the starving artist mindset being just like a total fallacy. I get that comment on my videos all the time talking about how like, oh, well, like I need to post on social media and like all of this stuff. And that's true if you want to be an independent artist, sure, in some respects. Right. But like there's so many jobs in the industry. There's galleries yeah. that you can have your work in. There's like li licensing for your art, like getting your work and like patterns and stuff. And it's just, there are so many options. Like art is all around us every single day. And like literally just like point your finger somewhere and there's a career. Absolutely. You know, I've I've worked as well. You know, I was freelance for a few years. And so I would have clients come to me from unknown places, you know, suddenly there's, you know, manufacturers, toy manufacturers, different people that would be like, we want you to sell vegetables at Safeway, and like, you know, and do illustrations for us for a grocery chain. Like, 
okay. Yeah. You know, or we want, you know, to do Legos. You know, there was a huge amount of work that I did with Lego, and they're like, this is cool. There's, again, there's art for, yeah, everything. It's everywhere. Yeah. Awesome. All right, I'm going to look at my questions again here. Sure. Um, all right, so at this point, what does your day-to-day -day job really look like? You mentioned that um, before we started recording that you just got back from a trip in New York City doing some, doing some film stuff. What does your day-to-day -day really look like right now? Boy, it's, it's all over the place. Uh, my current job, I am the lighting director at a company called Magnopus that a lot of people haven't heard of. Um, we do a lot of different things. We bridge the physical and digital divide, you know, trying to bring things together. So one aspect of our company that I'm most passionate about is virtual production, which is kind of new. So have, have you seen The Mandalorian? And yeah, the making yeah, I love The, the Mandalorian. Mandalorian with the, the LED stages that replace green screens? No. So you got to look it up. It's really cool. So instead okay. of using yeah. green screens and replacing things in post-production, they do pre-production. Mm -hmm. They do this thing called ICVFX, in-camera visual effects. So we take game engines. So this is where my experience in animation, my experience in games have now merged together into a brand new yeah. job where I'm on set. We built a world in a game engine. We put it up on this giant 100-foot LED wall. And then th there's sensors on the camera that tell the camera where it's moving so that the whole wall will shift its perspective and make it look like this vast world. Like I was, uh, last year I worked on Westworld for HBO and we have a whole sequence. Um, it just came out this past weekend, actually, the episodes we worked on. So we made New York City, Times Square, 40 years in the future, you know, with all green trees and no more cars and it's just a different version yeah. of it. But it's a virtual world where the actors... So the actors stand in front of all of that, yeah. and that's all virtual. So all of these buildings and everything that you see around the characters was a game engine. Um, it wasn't physical at all. Amazing. Um, so that's what I spend my time doing, and it depends on where we are in the project, what my day-to-day -day is. Sometimes it's early pre-production and planning out, like, well, what does it look like? You know, getting designs and doing paintovers and kind of like, all right, what is the world? Getting to understand the world and doing screen captures and, you know, kind of like guiding a group of artists, building those things, you know, refining it. And then at the end, we get on stage, and then it's live with the directors just standing there, you know, shifting and changing the light to make it perfect until we have it all shot, and then we go home and, like, we're done. Uh, yeah, sorry. So that's what my current really job is, is like. Today. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. Okay, I think he's laying down now. But anyway, your current job well, is like... Yeah, it's it's a lot of virtual production. Sometimes there's other odd tasks, you know, that come in. But it's, it's all kinds of different art. Um, our team was one of the groups that helped, you know, create this new method of virtual production from The Lion King to The Mandalorian to a bunch of different projects, Westworld, and then a new project that I yeah. can't speak about yet. Um, right. So yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. And then uh, on the side, I still try to do as much art as I can. You know, my my challenge yeah. is to like try to draw every day, do color studies, do paintings, do things that are just for me, on my own. Um, I've stopped doing a lot of freelance work because my own time I want to spend with my family or regenerating. It's kind of like breathing, breathing right. in and out. You can't always breathe out. Yeah. You have to breathe in sometimes. So at this point, at my age, you know, like. I want to spend time making sure that I'm breathing in as well and doing art for me, just, you know, that I find relaxing and enjoyable that the world will never see. But, you know, it's just like this back and forth. I also enjoy cinematography on the side, you know, shooting short films. And uh, yeah, I have a I have a son who's 20 and he and I have shot films since he was three, you know, together. And that's a lot of fun as well. I love that. Yeah, that's a part of what I really love about YouTube, too. Like, the, the videography, the cinematography, like the production side of it, I'm really passionate about. And it's, like, kind of a different art form in and of itself. And it's a really interesting challenge. Like, sometimes yeah. I think about the video that I'm making as, like, its own piece of art. And then the art that I make in the video is, like, another piece of art. It's like I'm really making two works of art at one time, you know, sometimes. And that's yeah. it's a really cool thing to think about, too. And I think, like, YouTube is just, like... I don't know, like once you build an audience here and start posting and building a community, like so many doors open up to you um, that are really awesome. But but yeah, so talking about work-life balance, um, how does YouTube fit into that? Because you have a job, which is a really cool, <laughs> amazing sounding job. Like you have a family, like you're making art on the side. Like how are you juggling all of this stuff, especially with your YouTube channel? Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. The YouTube channel came up from somebody at work because I started doing... Um, I do color studies often at many yeah. jobs that I've been at. 
did that at Pixar and I loved it. I learned so much from it from other people and just every week just coming for an hour you paint something and that's it. You know, you just do a quick study and it's, it's not about, you know, anatomy or anything. It's just about color, color and light. Um, and I loved it so much that every other company I've been at since, I, I do the same thing. And it was with this group that one of the people was like, hey, I have family members who'd really love to learn these things that we're learning in this color study, weekly color study groups. Would you consider recording some of these and putting them online? I'm like, okay, we'll see what happens. I expected it. Yeah. I didn't expect this to be something that would take off at all. I mean, I have relatively few viewers at this point still, but it's... It's fun. I just do it for, for the love of it. So when I find time, I squeeze it in. I wish I had more time to do it because it's been like six weeks since I posted a, a video, you know, and like, I just don't, I don't yeah. have time to do it. So, right. but then my whole goal is not for this to be my whole career. Maybe someday if it took off, yeah. that would be cool. But at, at this point it's like, you know, I, I make really, really good money doing, you know, the, the film side of things. And this right. is just kind of a, a side fun thing you know I what I want to do is give back to the community and just be like I, I if somebody asks me a question like how do you get into this I can just send them to a link instead of having to try to speak it all again you know I can, so yeah I just make the videos as I can from my experience over my years and we'll see what happens yeah, yeah, no, I mean, for what it's worth, your video on color studies that I saw with the egg, I thought that was yeah. immensely valuable. And I like, look at your subscriber count, and I was like, there's no way. There's no way he doesn't <laughs> have more subscribers than this. Because, like, the information, like, your experience is just, like, so out of the park. You know what I mean? Like, it was just, like, it. the two, uh -huh. like, the, the math was not mathing for me <laughs> in terms of, like, your experience <laughs> and your production value with, like, the subscriber count. So I think, honestly, like... In my opinion, it's just a matter of time if you, you know, try and stay consistent as much as possible. But if you could speak about, like, your experience in the film industry and, like, that really awesome job that you have, I think that would be so valuable. There are so many people that really want to start an animation but, like, have no idea where to begin. Um, I think that, yeah. you know, like, there are so many, like, questions that beginners have that, like, we don't even really think about um, because we're, it's just, yeah. like, so ingrained in our mind. Like, yeah, there are so many jobs in animation, but people are, like are there? I don't know. And like demystifying yeah, that hard. is so important. When I grew up, I grew up in New Hampshire. And so there was no art industry there. I had my grandfather who was an artist, but he worked for like a, you know, a technical company that made like clock parts, you know, but I didn't yeah. have any other connections to artists. And I didn't know, like, how do I, how do I do art? I have no clue. So being able to speak, you know, to those things for sure. I haven't, I actually have a giant list of things that I'd like to make videos on. I have one I awesome. have two of them already started, you know, of, of color specific things, but I have ideas for the future of like, what does progress look like and show some of yeah. the work from my friends who have never painted before and show their color studies over just a period of weeks to see how they improve so that when people get online and they try painting or doing color, you know, that they don't get discouraged. They're like, this is what it looks like. This is the process. Here's where your art will not look so great. And then it starts to look better. And then it starts to look good. And then it starts to really look great. And then you start understanding it and you can apply it and like trying to get people to be encouraged to go just one step at a time. This is like exercising. You're not going to just suddenly look like Dwayne Johnson overnight. If you have that goal, yeah. it's going to be like, okay, you can do five push ups. That's great. You know? So if you can, if you can just draw the basics and learn to see bit by bit, you know, you really will get there. There's just so many, so many opportunities. So I'm hoping to try to get into yeah. more of a rhythm now that I'm done with that project and starting something new. I'd like to start posting more regularly because yeah, there's a lot. I'd like to interact with people. I've seen so many comments that people have. They're like, well, what about this? And what about that? And like, yeah, I should probably yeah. make a video just to reply to those comments. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, just the viewer experience on YouTube is really unlike any other platform. And like, I love the, the long form ness of it. Like how I can just like make a, make a video that's like 20 minutes long. And that like, doesn't really do well on places like TikTok or Instagram. And it's just like right. the, the ability to really dive deep and really get into like the meat of it is, is so cool on YouTube. And I think it's like, as you were saying before, it's such an awesome, like online free university for so many different things. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's where I go when I'm like, oh, I've got to fix this thing, or I've got to put together this Ikea, you know, thing, or whatever, you know, and like, yeah. I'll go to YouTube first and be like, eh, can I find the quick thing, fast forward? Okay, that's it. That's what I need to know. E even yeah. like this, you know, yeah. coming to meet with you, I'm like, yeah, I could use my DSLR, YouTube. How do I do that? Oh, yeah, that's easy. There we go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally unrelated. But have you heard of um, LucidPixel, aka Adam Duff on YouTube? I feel like you guys would get along really well. I interviewed him a couple weeks ago. 
Oh, cool. Oh, no, I'll have to, I have to look him up. If you could email me that after. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, he's, like, about your age. He uh, does a lot of, like, Dark Souls kind of art. And he used to work oh, cool. in, um, he used to, he was trained in 2D animation, became a 3D animator. Yeah. I feel like you guys have, like, things to talk about for sure. I feel like you guys would be yeah. good friends. <laughs> That's cool. But Very, very cool. But, yeah. Um, so, talking a little bit more about about YouTube, um, what are some bits of knowledge that, I mean, you've worked in film, you've worked in animation, you've, you're obviously a really talented artist. What um, parts of those experiences really help you make YouTube videos or like kind of inform your process as you're in the middle of creating a video? Again, I, I think I'm coming to this from a different aspect of a lot of people because I, I, yeah. I kind of avoid social media in general. I have no Facebook account. I have no Twitter or Instagram or any of that. I just like not interested. Living I did for a while, honestly. but then I had a lot of friends get burned really bad with it. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to do this rat race. I just want to make art for the love of art. And when it came yeah. back to YouTube, it's like, you know what? I think I have a lot. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot in me that I want to share back that I think, you know, this could be useful for other people, you know, and it's stuff that I wish I had learned. So if I could speak to my former self and it's like, well, then why don't I record it? And it could be to other people that might have similar backgrounds. There was a there was an experience that I often tell that I think was awesome. When I was working on Ratatouille, um, it was the second film that I worked on with Brad Bird, who's the director, and he's just amazing. You know, worked with him on The Incredibles and on Ratatouille. And somebody asked him once during one of the interviews on those films, he's like, so how do you make a film for a future that you don't know and a political climate you don't know, for people in another part of the world that you don't know? How do you make a film that will give them what they want and he's like i don't i make a film i want to watch the end yeah. so i try to adopt that philosophy for my own videos to go all right well i'm not going to worry so much about the comments i mean i, I like to reply to comments you know uh, and see where people are at but i want to make a video that i think it's like man if i had only known this when i was younger and there's a lot of things that i've learned in the industry that school still doesn't teach especially with light and color there's a lot of talk mm. about illustration there's a lot of talk about shape and form there's a lot of talk of 3d modeling and animation yeah. but there's so little about lighting um, 3d lighting there's there's very very limited resources on this subject and i've learned 3d lighting and apply that to my 2d lighting and like you know i could share some of these tidbits that just aren't out there or at least i don't see where they are um yeah and i think it, other people would find it useful so why not you know yeah yeah, I, yeah. What um, thing. what aspects of light and color do you think art education is kind of overlooking right now? I feel okay. So, I think that there's a lot of schools that are tapping into. They they see people that want to do animation. They grow up playing games, watching movies. You know, they see people that you know, they're like, this is an industry that we can you know get into because people are excited about being artists. But they have a local community college with an art degree that has no right to be teaching art um, because they don't have instructors who understand the industry at all. They teach graphic mm. design, making people think that they're going to work at Pixar, Disney, or DreamWorks someday. And it's just not the case. They're teaching stuff that'll be used at a local graphic design shop, you know, that'll be doing print graphics. It's not the same thing. It's really not. And so I think there's a lot of people that, um, there's a lot of schools that are trying to teach art that aren't teaching art. They're teaching tools. They're teaching Photoshop, not art. Yeah. Those are two very, very different things. I think there's very few schools that are truly teaching art, um, real, like the valuable art. And then those that do teach art, I think there is a category, this is again, my personal opinion, I think there's a lot of art schools that teach stuff that I wouldn't classify as art. Um, expressionism through abstract spraying of paint. And like, well, yeah. I think that there's a value in that, but it's such a niche market, you know, for uh, abstract modern art, museum art. Like what I think mm -hmm. really speaks to the soul of us as humans more so, you know, as shown like there's people that go to museums, yes, but there's more people that will sit at home and watch TV shows on repeat and they will watch animation yeah. and consume everything off of Disney Plus. Where the money is at, where the excitement is at, where the storytelling is at nowadays, I think is in games and film. 
in in mm. TV where people are really motivated. Like I watched Arcane recently, and like, oh man, the artwork is so gorgeous. You know, and there's just so yeah. much of that. The backgrounds that are all this is traditional art skills that you need, and it's like you either have little community colleges that aren't teaching the real art, or these high lofty places that are like that's not art. And like you just have a couple yeah. of schools in the middle that kind of go like Ringling Coolitz College of Art and Design, Savannah College of Art and Design. Cal Arts, you know, there's there's a, there's certain schools in there. There's more, you know, that are like, yeah, okay, let's let's give you the tools to actually get into those jobs. Um, yeah, yeah, I took some art classes in college. Uh, I majored in political science, so I'm not really using my degree in any capacity right now. Which is really common, um, but yeah, yeah, no, it's so common. Um, but I did minor in art at college, and I took some classes, and I was really disappointed um with like the kind of education I was getting my presses were lovely for what it's worth but like I think I really wanted like an atelier experience and that's not really what I was getting I was getting the kind of thing that you were talking about and I think like I you know I read art history books and like I kind of like study the history of art education and stuff and um I, I've sort of I'm under the impression that modern art really had a detrimental effect on like the kind of atelier experience that you would normally get in our exactly. education. I think that's um, kind of a profoundly negative, negative effect of the modern art movement. Yeah. Yeah. I found it really insightful going to Europe because if you go to, um, I don't know if you've been to Europe at all, but there's a difference yeah, in I museums. Have, yeah. So yeah. when I go to a me an art museum in the U.S., it's like no photos, you know, uh, you go and you see all this stuff and sometimes the experience is like, hey, it's okay. It's, it's kind of cool. Sometimes there's artwork that's really mm -hmm. beautiful. But when I've gone yeah. to Europe, you know, you see people that bring in canvases and easels and they sit there all day long copying the masters. I'm like, okay, those students yeah. are going to learn something because they're, they're like going, what did they do? What colors did they choose? How did they do those shapes? How did they do those forms? How did they get those brush strokes? How did they work with the paint? You know, and like, they're really studying it and like, okay, that's where you're going to yeah. learn something versus just talking about art. You know, I've, I've often tell people too, like spend more time creating art than talking about creating art. You know, there's a lot of people that get, you know, into just talking and like, but if you're not doing more, you will never actually grow, you know, like yeah. it, you can watch as much as I want to share information, like seeing your video is, you know, your videos are awesome and my videos are trying to share something, but I'm hoping that in the end of the day, people will feel inspired to turn off YouTube and actually go and draw and paint. Yeah. You know, yeah. actually do the process because that's the only yeah, thing that will actually the get you goal. into the industry. That's it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've kind of fallen into that trap myself where, like, you know, YouTube is my job now. But that also means that, like, it's way easier for me to talk about art and make a video about that. That takes, like, 45 minutes tops. Then, like, right. <laughs> spend a week, like, clearing my schedule, just making things, filming that. And, like, that takes so much more time. And yeah. I kind of, I fell into that trap where like, that's what I was doing. Cause I, I moved across the country and that was like way easier for me to just do those kind of videos for a while. But like, right. I can like feel my art stagnating and sorry, my cat is just really just like, around today, but <laughs> I, I felt my art stagnating. And so I had to like, like reassess things, figure out like, how can I make art a priority again? And just like make videos about this because I still like, you know, want to do my job, but like I need to make art in order to call myself an artist. Yeah. Breathe in, breathe out, you know, those type of things. There's times where you need to learn yeah. something and times where you need to apply it and, and learn and apply and that kind of back and forth of like, okay, I'm struggling, I'm stagnating in something I'm doing. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take that, you know, the, the thinking side of my brain a bit to try to find ways to knock that over and then apply it, apply it and apply it until it becomes natural. And, just, and then, like, your art will grow that way. So it has to be both. And I think yeah. in this this era of social media, that's the biggest challenge is that it's, it's too easy to get sucked into watching other people live life and not going and living your own life yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a tough one. All right. That's the bulk of my questions, honestly. So if you have any questions for me... Um, hit me with them but yeah i mean I, yeah uh, of course i'm great in, answers oh well thank you yeah i'm uh you know this is, i'm an honor honored to be asked this is a lot of fun i always uh, enjoy doing things like this um yeah i'm interested in you know, so you do youtube full-time and this doesn't have to be recorded yeah. for that channel i mean we can keep recording no, that's, that's fine okay. but you're able to make enough of a living to do this full-time with 
would you say 70,000, 60,000 subscribers? Uh, yeah, I'm um, approaching 100K pretty soon in the next couple of weeks. I'm at like 90, 92K or something right now. But yeah, wow, um, awesome. I think like a, a big part of that is because of what I talk about. Like, yep. um, I don't know if you like are really aware of like how monetization works on YouTube, but there's like CPM, which is kind of the ad rate that like advertisers yep. will pay to put ads in your content. And that fluctuates dramatically depending on what you talk about, right? So like finance is going to have a higher CPM than like gaming because there are more advertisers that have higher value products that are related to finance. Um, And my channel started out sort of chronically my journey to become a full-time artist and I've now achieved that dream, which is awesome. But like as soon as it started making money, I had this realization that no one was really talking about like the entrepreneurship or like the finance side of being an artist. And then I could provide that with the money that I was like now making and like sort of talking about it. So that's a big part of why I've been able to take this full time is because I talk about a little bit of finance and that dramatically helps like appeal to sponsors and like higher ad rates. So, um, yeah, I make around like four ish thousand dollars a month from YouTube AdSense, and that's before sponsorships, before affiliate marketing. I'm hoping to add oh, like print great. sales on top of that pretty soon. But, but yeah, so it's a really interesting kind of career that like wasn't around like 15 years ago. You know what I mean? Like there was yeah. not like, <laughs> and it's really cool to to be a part of that. But yeah, that's kind of how I've been able to make that work, basically. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Because I can say, as much as my job sounds really cool, there are days that I go, there's still politics, there's still rough stuff, you know, that happens, and it's yeah. hard, hard work, you know, and, and there's days where, like, you know what, what if I were to just paint, do YouTube videos, and maybe, like, train people, you know, start, you know, like, mentoring people in illustration, light and color, you know, and just do that, like, a more relaxed, I know my pay would drop significantly, but, you know, that's in the back of my head is, like, a... Not quite. I don't think I'll ever retire. I don't really want to retire. I love doing art, so I'm like I always yeah. want to do art. You know, it's not one of these things that's a very back-breaking physical thing. So as long as my brain is still here, I'll you know want to keep doing this. So that's in my back of my head to explore that slightly. And like one of the things that I love about um, the world we live in now, with the you know kind of pandemic as it's somewhat starting to come to a close, is it gave us you know, especially artists, the ability to live anywhere we want. And so I don't have to, you know, like my current job is full-time remote, except for when there's stuff on set. You know, I fly to New York. Um, My company's based in Los Angeles, but like, I'm not going to live in Los Angeles. I did that before, no interest anymore. So I can live anywhere. I can live in a small town. I can live, you know, I live outside of Atlanta now, you know, but you have choices, which is great. You know, and I think about that too. Like if I was my own boss, I've always done work for other people, but I've not done where I truly, you know, I make my own content and sell it directly to people, you know, through YouTube or, you know, making a a class or something like that. And it's in the back of my brain, you know, it sits there going, hmm, would I do that? Yeah. Like, like I think if I could do anything, if suddenly somebody came to me and said, you have unlimited funds, you can do whatever, I wouldn't sit on a boat all day and like, no, I want to make films. I want to tell stories. I I want to, you know, I would love to make my own feature film, you know, and, uh, promote things that way and like well if i'm going to do that someday i'm going to need to start doing it now to you know kind of build towards that i have ideas you know but i'd love love to be you know have enough money to be able to have choice with what i spend my days doing instead of working 10 12 hours a day for a company i would love to spend that you know going i only work six hours a day four days a week and you know i spend my time doing art and then the rest of my time pursuing my own you know that would be great. So talking to people like yourself, it's always interesting to me to go, Hmm. Yeah. I'm interested. See, see where it goes. It's definitely possible. Yeah. I mean, I know artists that have an online course and make like $20,000 a month just from their online course and their YouTube channel is at the top of their marketing funnel to get that. And like Adam Duff, for example, um, does like time lapses, talks about art, like kind of the mindset of being an artist, productivity tips and stuff like that. And he has a mentorship program that's I think like nine, eight, nine weeks long. Um, And he like supports, you know, he has two kids or I know he has at least, he has a family for sure. Um, But he's able to make a comfortable full-time living off of that. And yeah, I think it's definitely possible. Like I 
wouldn't necessarily assume that you'd be taking a pay cut depending on how you structure things. Um, That's true. Because, yep. yeah, there's, there's, there's a ton of money in the industry. And, like, especially if you are able to offer, like, a really high-value service to people, like, in the form of, like, a course or something, yeah, yep. I mean, I... I would say go for it. Um, if that's a thing that you can start building, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I saw somebody who I who I followed um, who did photography, and he said the same thing. You know, like he was he was challenged by another fellow photographer, like go full time YouTube. And he's like, okay. And a year later, he's like, I'm glad I did. So that's always in the back of yeah. my head to go. Hmm. One other thing I can say that I think is really cool um, about the industry is it it's not like a tiered approach. I think my parents, you know, your grandparents and, you know, the generations before us, the world was this tiered ladder that you work your way up a corporate ladder and you come to one company and you start low and you work your way up. And I don't think that that exists anymore. Um, I think that there yeah. is, it's kind of like you, you get into the industry and there are positions where you have more kind of creative authority and there's, there's growth to happen, but you can have somebody like yourself that has you know, you're just beginning and you're seeing success and I can be inspired by you, even though I have 25 yeah. years experience, you can be inspired by me and we can be inspired by each other and we can always learn from yeah. each other. And I think that's another thing that's really powerful to remember always is that every single person you can learn from. So I, I don't care if they're an intern or if they're a big name director, you can learn from these people. And, you know, I always try to promote the idea of learn to be cool you know, like with people, learn to have compassion, yeah. learn to be able to speak to people and treat people well. And that is going to get you further in the industry than just your art skill. Um, there's a lot of people who forget that being able to be human and to see other people's is, you know, is human and learn from each other is, is what people want. They're like, I work with that person again because they were awesome. You know, they were, yeah. they were fun. They had a good sense of humor. They could be relaxed. They could do their work and get things done on time. You know, that plays a bigger part than just your pure skill. So as working with skill too, there's a lot of students that I meet that, that don't know how to speak. I'm like, okay, go work on this. Go talk with people. Be, be okay. Yeah. Like yourself, you're super easy to talk with you. And like, so you're I mean, being part of that is just because I'm so comfortable, like being on camera now, you know, I've been making videos for two years. And like, if you watch the first video that I ever made, which is still on my channel, like I was, <laughs> I was very <laughs> introverted. I was very camera shy. And like a big part of that is just being being comfortable with being afraid, like having to take yeah. that first step and put yourself out there is a really big hurdle that a lot of people don't end up crossing because they're just, they feel like they're stuck. Like they'll never be able to get that point. But like to get to that point, you, you have to be bad at it at first. And that's just how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I totally agree with that. And those are the good things that I think a lot of young people that are interested in the arts need to hear. Like just go yeah. get out there, you know, I, challenge yourself a bit, you know, and you know, be a cool person to work with. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. All right. Do you have any other questions for me or like things that you want to say in general? Um, no, I mean, I, I think this is, this has been great. Uh, I'm, yeah. it'd be fun to, to keep in contact as things move forward, you know? Uh, Absolutely. I would love that. You know, yeah. I, I think it's, what's fun is the, the community um, definitely. that's something that I definitely miss. And that's, that's when I went freelance for a few years, I would work for advertising agencies or different companies, you know, and, and it was just me doing yeah. artwork by myself. And that's one of the things, the reasons why I didn't stay freelance long term was that it's like, lonely. Yeah. yeah it's lonely. You'd be able to be able to have relationships. And so like community of people and doing classes or things like that, it's kind of an interesting way to have some community, you know, so yeah. just kind of dipping my foot into that and seeing where things go. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, I hope that if we you know, I, if I interview again, um, if I interview again, that you'll be um, like w way higher subscriber count that you'll like really be making it because I think you definitely deserve that. Like, I think you definitely have what oh, it takes. I mean, I talk to people about YouTube all the time. Um, and so I, I like to think that I can like spot a good opportunity when I see it. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, so yeah, no, um, Thank you so much for, for taking time out of your day to talk to me, Jeremy. I absolutely. would absolutely love to keep in contact. You have my email, free to reach out literally whenever. I would love to chat. Yeah. Sure. I hope you guys have a great time watching it as much as I had a great time sitting down with Jeremy and chatting. And I'll see you in the next one.